and through their weirdness, because men have weirdness too, we just can't use an excuse for it. Through the weirdness that happens, women learn to play a little game I learned and picked up. It's called man ipulation. Man ipulation. And I've determined where this whole psyche of the mind and the woman has been developed. And since we're just being blatantly honest anyway today, can I talk to you for a second? Why women are manipulators in a lot of the sense. Men, I'm going to tell on us. Let all the tricks out the bag. There are two types of women to most men. I said most, not all, but most. Two types of women. There's the plain kind. And there's the marrying kind. Plain kind and the marrying kind. And what happens generally is when a man wants to get married, he looks for an entirely different type of person than what he dated. I know, men, you're not going to admit it and be honest. I didn't say that it was right, but that's a syndrome. He wants to play with the playing kind and marry the marrying kind. And, men, if you really give me an amen, I might even be bold. And say, so after he marries the marrying kind, he wants the marrying kind to turn into the playing kind. Y'all left me out there. And the problem is, women, if you mark yourself as the plain kind, and you are 30 years old, 35, 40, 45, 50, and have no man, it could be the fact that men are not looking for the plain kind to marry. And if you wonder why relationships come and go, it could be the fact that you're the playing kind, and you need to change something about yourself. That's a side note. But women who realize this, and women, am I totally just, am I missing it at all? Or can, some, can I just have one woman to be just honest and say, some of this is right? I didn't think I was going to get hands, but I thought I'd try it. Women, because you understand this, I understand your frustration. So you began to use what should be the fruits of your union, I'll put it that way, and a general way, to very classy, in a sense, manipulate your husband. And you write it off on things like, well, I've got a headache. I see you smiling. It's all right. And you begin to use the things to your advantage, in a sense, to get what you want. Anybody ever done that? Men, we do it in a different way. But the problem is, in a sense, is that most manipulators can only do that for a while until we figure out the game. And we learn how to work it in the sense that we say, hey, honey, you want to go shopping? I'll go and carry your bags. And we reverse the curse, flip it around, and do the very same thing. So we can't point all of our fingers at the women because, men, we do it the same. Can I get a grunt or a Tim Allen hoo, hoo, hoo or something from you? Let me know you're there. And the danger of that in the sense of being manipulated is it's hurtful to the men because we have no room to err uh, to break down and have emotional relapses like the women do. And the problem with that is in the sense that let me just look at this and, and I believe it's Judges chapter 14 verse 17. Story of Samson. Let's read it today. And she wept, Samson's wife, before him, seven days. Oh, Lord, talking about manipulation. When my wife starts crying, I lose it all. Thought, cast off all restraints and lose all plans. And women, if your husband's like, you know you use that to your advantage. While the feast lasted, and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him. She was wanting to know a secret, something important, something close to his heart. And she manipulated the secret out of him. Because somebody, if you've ever had your wife lay sore upon you, make your life difficult, you understand. Sometimes it's easier just to relinquish and say, okay, here it is. This is what's happening. And it says she lay sore upon and she, he, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. What happened? She told something intimate about Samson that he didn't want anybody to know, and she manipulated out of him to the people he didn't want them to find out about. 
Let's make this practical. You ever been in the argument and your face is turning red and you raise your voice up one level and she raises her voice up another level and you raise your voice up one level higher and it's back and forth to the point that you're screaming and ranting and raving and, and you might even get just throwing stuff and pouring water out the goldfish bowl, laughing at him while he's drying, kick the dog, set the cat, do all that type of stuff. Messing, cussing, fussing, I don't know what goes on at your house. No, that happens in mine. That doesn't. All laughing like you don't believe me. And in a moment of weakness, something that your wife knows about you. She said, well, the only reason that you can't take that is for the simple fact that blah, 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 blah. And in that moment of weakness, she was the prophet. She was the master. She profited from the weakness that you shared with her that in a time of intimacy you revealed about yourself that you're so uncomfortable with in the first place. And she may have won the battle, but through the process, she lost the war. Because, men, what did she do to us? She demasculated us to the point that we will forever be silent and never, and we will always be quiet, and we will never speak the intense, the deepest parts of her heart to anybody again. Manipulation. Manipulation. And we wonder why women talk so much. And you got to talk to Scooter because he thinks I talk too much. They wonder why we're silent, men. They wonder why we're silent. Because it is possible to be married and feel alone and isolated that you can't talk to your partner. And women, I'm trying to be honest with you today. To let you know, I'm not trying to point fingers and say you're all messed up. Let, let me just tell you, the men are just as messed up as the women, if not more. Matter of fact, I commend women, so please don't get this twisted today, because it's, it's, most of the, it's women primarily that have carried the church for thousands of years. I honor that. It's the women that when the man leaves the household, it's the woman that takes care of the kids and raises them up and works two or three jobs to make ends meet. I commend you. But the state of life, the way we're living doesn't have to be so. If we could communicate our differences and realize we don't have to keep peeking over the wall at one another, we can come together and be honest, get over some things, if we could get it developed in our mind. Lose the childish ways of thinking. Manipulation is as of witchcraft. And men, if you really know your scripture, it says, suffer not a witch to live but burn her. So you feel like it's your natural obligation to burn the witch in your life as much as possible. I did say witch with a W, all right? Let's get that clear. Let's not mess that up. So through the process, she has made your life so difficult to the point that you find ways to escape it by mowing the grass. You don't need to mow your grass when it's already cut. You've got the blade up on nine. For the simple fact that you have to mow it every other day because it gives you something to do to escape the manipulation in your own house. We cover it up in subtle ways, but women, I know you see through it too. And then it causes a feeling, well, he doesn't love me and he doesn't want to spend time with me. And he's just not the same man. And we no longer have that relationship. Could it be the fact that you cut off the physical part through manipulation to get what you want to the point that he became used to living without it to the point he does no longer need it in the sense because he's found other ways to occupy uh, the desires of his heart in that sense. It may not be with a person, but it could be through a hobby or it could be through a job. And you wonder why many times we're workaholics and we don't want to come home. It's because we're not even welcome in our own house in the sense because the mind games that take place, and I wish I had a man that would just be honest and believe that God is bringing deliverance to your household because I am telling the truth in the sense I'm not saying everybody is like this but I promise you I found more people like this than are not and if you don't have this lifestyle that is great keep at it I don't either but I promise I will never allow it to enter my relationship why because I will continually be aware of it so this applies to everyone in every sense men become silent feel isolated and alone the book of Genesis God created Adam Adam had God Adam was intelligent had all the animals everything else but God looked down and said this joker is not going to make it by himself he needs somebody to talk to he said it's not good for man to be alone so he created a counterpart for him a companion 
And women, all we really want from you is not to solve all of our problems, but listen to us when we talk. If your husband's silent, it's probably